Okay, next question. Good morning, Sarah. Um, I have sort of a practical question and more of a esoteric question. You may not phrase it right, so help me out. Go ahead. Um, we hear a lot right now about um, the fact that we really don't have the technology to physically get us off planet or to another I'm solar. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not hearing you well. You technically should get what? We, I've, I've read that we currently don't have the technology or capability to transport the human species out of the solar system or off the planet far enough. So the first question is really practically based. What do we need to invent and build to get the, the human species to another ecosystem environment? But going along with that line of thought, uh, do you think that our essential humanness is contingent on living in these bodies, or is there, would you foresee it some, you know, thousands of years later, uh, could we project some aspect of our consciousness into some other kind of a system or life form? And I think Michi Okaku's talked about, you know, you might have to make an uh, information stream and send it off through some alternate okay. transport. Let me address your question. First of all, I do think we'll probably be able to get outside of our solar system, I've written a paper on that, by the end of the century. But we're going to have to bridge the gap between general relativity and quantum mechanics, and we haven't done that yet. We just, there's some real elusive answers there that are, it's not clear how we're going to do it. But it is clear that the aliens have done it, and uh, how they've done it through wormholes or whatever device they follow. Um, I mean, that's concept within general relativity. I'm not sure that's the right concept, but nevertheless, that is the area of breakthrough that we have to, we have, to have before we can get there. The second question has to do with the nature of consciousness itself, and we have not uh, really resolved that problem either. And of course, there are multi-dimensional theories which uh, have not, are not well formed, and it appears that string theory, brain theory, M theory, which are attempts at multidimensional theories, are kind of falling apart on us right now. They're not really substantial theories and not holding water. But the, uh, the, the work at the LHC, and due to resume this year in Switzerland, may help us shed some brand new light on that. However, the issue of consciousness is one that's still out. <coughs> One of my early uh, investors and board persons with Institute of Nordic Sciences was John Fetzer. I don't know how many know that name, but uh, John owned, uh, uh, owned uh, television stations in the uh, Michigan area, and for more broadly, and the, uh, the, was it the Detroit the baseball team, and a few other things. He's a wealthy philanthropist, and he was on my board. And he said, Victor, I would like, in your studies of consciousness, the first issue is, uh, does consciousness just survive death? And I said to him, John, I would love to research that, but I'm going to first find out what consciousness is, because we really don't know. And uh, you know, for you folks here, as I have often outlined or framed the issue you know, of the two extremes, the idealist extreme on the one hand, that says all this consciousness in the extreme point of view is that matter is not really matter, it's just a thought in the universal mind. That's the extreme of idealism, which goes back to, to Platonic times. And then on the other extreme is uh, scientific materialism uh, and reductionism that says consciousness is only an epiphenomenon of the collision of, random collision of matter, it's an accident. Well, I don't believe any one of those, either one of those two extremes is correct. But the truth somewhere is in between. And that's what we've been looking for for 35 years, and we're narrowing down. But we still don't have the answer, and nor do we have any definitive experiments in science that we can test, because science is about postulating and finding experimental evidence to validate your postulate. So somewhere in between those two extremes, we're sure there's an answer to this question, what is consciousness? But we still haven't come there yet. That is one of the great enigmas, and I'm sure that it is a part of this intersection between general relativity and quantum mechanics that help us understand that. But 
that you want to be a Nick before you share the rest of it. And it's soil sort of toughness. And as we, if we resolve that in a proper way over the next decade or so, uh, then I'm sure by the end of the century, uh, we'll be able to go outside of the, this solar system that we're in. But also I can say in a hopeful way, I think we're narrowing in and getting pretty close to the concept of being the up study. We're not too far away from that. And that would help us understand this issue very much. Better. Oh.